40 high school students, both boys and girls, attended the first ever robotics camp organized by BK Tech House. At the camp, students are trained by senior students from Massachusetts Institute of Technology with hopes to equip them with skills to thrive in the digital era. What we wanted here as BK Tech House is to um, equip the students with skills that can help them uh, be more employable, uh, solve uh, efficiently problems that they will be facing in the future. Uh, Rwanda is more and more uh, becoming a knowledge-based economy as we aim to become. Uh, and with that, also in a more and more dominated, uh, technology-dominated world, we want to have our youth, we want to have our, our workers uh, equipped with the right skills to be able to um, tackle uh, uh, problems at hand. So we've actually asked the kids to try and focus on the potential real-world applications of the problems that they're solving. And on the first day of camp, they came up with a lot of different things. For example, automated um, dusting of pesticides and protection of crops, automated watering, being able to sort through different products. We went with the agricultural theme because we knew it was something that lots of students in Rwanda cared a lot about and had a lot of background in. What I'd like to see in the future is that they take the skills that they learn here making these prototypes and go on and take them to the next level. Say, now that I know how to so sort colored bricks, I want to find out what it takes to sort boxes or takes to sort fruit, or what does it take to go even a step further and start my own company. That's the skills that we're hoping to teach them today. Not only the knowledge of computer science and engineering, but also the problem solving skills that it'll take to solve problems in the future. So in many ways it's really, how do we use new tools, technology, to produce more with the little that we have. And we feel, with what we've seen, I mean, history can be, uh, can kind of like complement what we're saying here, but we know by using these tools, we can be able to produce more, especially uh, in field and a sector that is contributes so much to our economy. For Wanda to achieve the goal of moving from an agricultural to a knowledge-based economy, investment in young students and the integration of new technologies in school curriculums is key. So I think robotics is really important in schools because it is a field that addresses a lot of different issues. Robotics addresses issues of computer science, of logic, of being able to do mechanical engineering, and it gives kids skills that they can use in other areas. Um, part of my research job was actually teaching a different camp at a uh, university in America. And what I saw was that the kids were not just learning how to build robots, they were taking away skills that would help them build other things, regardless of whether they wanted to go be a computer scientist or a software engineer or a mechanical engineer or pursue some other field. So I think it gives students a lot of skills that they'll need in the future, especially as the jobs that are available shift more and more towards computer science and automation. Now that we're in a world that is tech-driven, we have to be able to adapt our education system uh, for um, the future generations to be able to cope with this new uh, rise in technology. Of course, there's that uh, balance between um, high productivity that the robots offer and the jobs that are um, being reduced. But when we add in robots to the education system, we are able to bring up students and uh, workers of the future who will um, work with the robots, who work within the situation to bring the optimum, um, optimum capital, optimum uh, product for the country. The greatest advantage of um, robots over humans is that they are quite resilient over um, humans. So they can work for longer. They can work for hours more. They can keep track of the of the plants in a way that humans would never be able to do because they'd be tired or um, uh, or basically incompetent in such fields. So uh, when we bring up robots to in that field, it will be able to um, help agriculture a lot by increasing the yield and paying attention to the to the um, to the plants in a way that um, a human may not have accessibility to. As far as Rwanda is concerned, the most uh, important resource we have is human capital. And if it is exposed to education, education, proper quality education, where students can learn uh, on hands-on approach, I, I know we can make a lot of strides, as you have said, especially with youth. And uh, these are being now exposed to this construction of robots, uh, you have seen how they are programming. They are being inspired. And when they go back to, the, to their schools, respective schools, they are going to be, in fact, not only 
being inspired, they also inspire others. They will be ambassadors. So they will like their subject matter. And they will look forward to being computer engineers, being scientists, so that they know the use of robots. They have been hearing robots, but now they have touched them. They have worked on them. So they know what they will do in the construction, building construction, agriculture, in different sectors of economy. For three weeks, the students will gain skills on how to make simple robots and how to get them to perform tasks with much focus on agriculture, the backbone of the country's economy. We firstly get to call all these instructions within the computer. There's a software called Robot C. That's where we first code all the codes so we just implement how the, the robot is going to do in, within the physical part. We first code on the, on the computer how it's going to move, at what distance, at what speed. So we just put on, we download what we did on a, on a robot so that it's just going to do what we've coded within a computer. That's how it works. What the kids are learning here, one of them is, yes, the technical part of actually running codes to tell a robot or machine to do specific tasks that you want it to do. But mainly is also how do you work together with other people? with common interest to address a common problem. Uh, how do we push them to think critically on a different way of solving a problem using tools they never used before? Uh, how do we push them to, um, to think out of outside of the box, right? Many of all of these kids actually, other than two, uh, none of them had ever touched a robot before, coded or wrote any line of code. Now with here, what you can see them doing here behind me, I mean, it's impressive. Now, if they live here and they take the same passion, the same energy, the same approach to solving everyday problems, we hope that in the future it becomes more of um, this, uh, it can become contagious, where they go back to their schools, uh, it's 40 of them, uh, 20 different schools. We want to see them going back, taking the same approach, all the skills they've learned here, to share with their they, they peers. And from there, again, this is just one camp. We'll do many more, hopefully bigger and bigger. But what we want to see is seeing this uh, hopefully replicated not only in Rwanda, maybe in East Africa, or maybe in other regions where now Africans are doing, using technology to come up with our own solutions. Uh, in fact, we hope and we, we are sure one of these kids is going to come up with a made in Rwanda robot, maybe in agriculture or construction. But it's really in a sense just the starting and admitting that they have to start, we have to start somewhere, right? So with what you see them doing here, give them another three years, five years, they're building Lego robots now, but with the right tools and uh, even more deeper training, there's no doubt they'll be able to build bigger machines and bigger robots that can solve bigger problems. Yeah.